Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Got an announcement for you today coming from us. Here at What the World Needs is Jesus, we will be at Wheels Creek Assisted Living every Wednesday evening at 1.30 p.m. The address there is 1050 Airport Road West, Fort Payne, Alabama, 35968. We'll be singing and someone will be bringing the word. We'd like to invite anyone who would like to be with us to do so. I assure you, you will leave with a blessing. We ask if you would, please say a prayer for the residents there at the Assisted Living. If you need more information, you can contact Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Now today's message is coming from Brother Kenneth Crane. The title of his message is, Look at Israel. Then we're going to have a song from Sister Karen Crane singing, He is in the house. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell to turn your notification on YouTube and follow, like, and share us on Facebook. Now let this video be a blessing. I want to tell you today, praise the Lord, and welcome you to What the World Needs is Jesus Broadcast. I want to thank you for listening. We just want you to know here, all we want to do is just try to share the word with you. Uh, we, you know, that's all, that's what we want to do here, is share the truth with you. And the Bible says that heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus said, my word will stand. Amen. So therefore, what we need to do is stand on the word, glory to God, and stand upon Jesus. Amen. And yes. thank God for the Holy Ghost. I want to say to you today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the signs of the time that's going on and about Israel over there and uh, the things that have come down the road and stuff. And I want you to know something, y'all. The Word of God is fulfilling right down to a T. Yes, sir. You see that uh, Jerusalem behind me and Israel over there? For 2,000 years, it didn't exist. So in order for all these scriptures to be fulfilled, that we're going to talk about some of them here today and things that the Lord, we're just going to follow the Holy Ghost, praise God. I can't come up with no message. Don't want to try to dig one up myself because if it was of me, it wouldn't be no good. But I want you to understand something. Israel had to become a nation in order for the Bible to be fulfilled. And that's one of the greatest signs of the Bible fulfillment was Israel when it came a nation in 1948. And then uh, when Jerusalem became the capital, Praise God, the word, the word is coming together, and it's fulfilling right down to a T. You know, in AD 70, Israel was destroyed, and it didn't exist no more as a nation of the 1948. But I want you to understand something. I'm going to start reading in the scriptures right here in Matthew. And me and Brother Harold O'Neill, which does broadcast here, uh, me and him was talking about this the other night, and I agree 100% me and him did on what we're talking about. These scriptures are being fulfilled right down to a T, and they're happening so fast till it's just, it amazes me to read the Word and see the Word of God being fulfilled right down to a T. You say, well, how can you say the Scriptures are being fulfilled? Well, turn your news on see what's going over there on over there in Israel right now. Right. Look and see what's going on over there. And you know, the Bible says in the last days that, the, uh, the pe that people will be persecuted for Christ's name's sake. The main goal that we need to look at is not, so, don't look at America, don't look at Israel. Uh -huh. Israel is the main key to the right. Bible being fulfilled, right. the prophecies of the Bible, all right, and the Jewish people. And I want you to know something, Israel, we pray, we ain't forgot you, we're still right. praying for you, we know all that stuff's going on over there, but you know what, it's part of Bible being fulfilled in order for these things, it's, it's got to happen, these things have. Yeah. But I want you to understand something over there. If you watch this in Israel, or you a Jew over here, anywhere in the world you watch this and you're a Jew, you know salvation's available to you yes, if you receive yes, Jesus. Sir. But I know uh, I know there's a lot of Jewish people that don't believe that Jesus came and was born of a virgin, walked this earth for 33 and a half years. I understand that. And I, I understand that. Yeah. You, you're still looking for Jesus to come, and I got some good news for you. Hang on for a little while because he is coming. <laughs> He's going to step out one day and he's going to put his foot down, praise God, and you're going to see them nail-scarred hands and you're going to say, the Messiah has come and it's going to reveal the truth to you. And But you know what it's going to do? The truth is going to set you free. You know what? The truth is going to step down one day, praise God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, he's going to step down one day and you're going to know that he is the I am that I am and step down. But I want you to know something today. If you hear this word, praise God, and it convicts your heart, salvation's available to you. I'm telling you, I'm not standing up here, praise God, by coincidence. 
uh, I'm blood bought, born again, Holy Ghost filled, child of the King, glory to God. And I've read the Word, and I know the Holy Ghost is real, and He's convicting people's hearts today. These Jewish people are getting saved everywhere. And I want you to, I want to talk, if you are in this in America, and you're watching this right here, and you see this broadcast, listen, they're gonna be a remnant of the Jews that's gonna leave this country, and they're gonna go back to Israel. You say, well, how can you say that? Because they're being persecuted for Christ's name's sake in this country here. They're being persecuted, so therefore, you know what they'll do? Well, you know what? If you read the Bible, Jesus said he, they'll start returning back to their homeland from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They've, come, they've been coming in from all over the north and the, uh, all over these other countries. They've been coming into Israel. But I'm going to tell you what, from uh, they're being persecuted in America and in Canada and places like that. Guess what's going to happen? They fix start being a remnant of them, start leaving and going back to Israel. And boy, that's 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 going to be the Bible fulfillment from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They're going to come in. He's gathering them together, getting he's bringing them in, just like the Bible says. They already some that's left from, uh, over here in the west and went to already went home, but they're going to be another. More and more of them start leaving and going over there because of the persecution. It's been, and you know what's the shameful is? It's happening here in America, the land of the free. Praise God! Where are you supposed to have freedom to to worship and the religion you want to have? But I'm telling you, it's happening and being persecuted. So therefore, it's coming. The word of God's going to fulfill, y'all. Yes, it is. I want to ask you this question: What side are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the side with Jesus? Or are you going to be on the other side? Are you going to be on the left side or the right Come side? On. You need to think about that. I want to ask you something. If you died today, where would you go spend eternity at? Right. Think about that. That's a question we need to ask. It ain't being spoken enough about this. If you died, when you hear this and you, you die the next day and you hear this uh, broadcast, where would you spend eternity at? Right. Right. Think about that. But I'm going to tell you what, Jesus Christ, praise God, he, listen, he come to seek and to save them that were lost. Yep. And the reason it... Uh, God uh, blinded some of the Jewish people are blinded right now is because Jesus said he come and dwelt among his own his own received him not so therefore he turned to the Gentiles they're blinded in part but you know what it don't matter praise God if, if you hear the gospel and you're a Jew and you turn to Jesus and you say I believe what the word says I believe that you was born of a virgin I believe you did walk this earth for 33 years I believe you did die on that cross I believe you was born of that virgin you gave your life at Calvary I believe that and I want you to save me. Guess what's going to happen? The Spirit's drawing you. Yep. you you're going to get born again. Right. But you know why? He said, let whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, and they shall be saved. Yeah. And you know what? He said, if I be lifted up above the earth, and he was, he was lifted up. Yeah, he, was. he was put on that cross, praise God, and he gave his life on that cross. And praise God, he rose on the third day. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, we got to be we got to be born again in order to go to heaven. We can't get there any other way. Now, I'm going to start reading in Matthew chapter 24, and I want you to listen to what it says right here. The signs of Christ coming. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be here left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. You see that picture behind me right there of Jerusalem? Yeah. That was, they over there uh, uh, digging around. And they're finding rocks and things. And I've seen the picture of it where those stones, they dug out and they left them laying just like they was. Where what Jesus said right here, did not be left one stone upon another. Them stones is laying there, scattered out, and they find it. Them old, the old parts of that wall there, where it was, the foundation was at and everything, and them stones laying. The scripture was fulfilled in A.D. 70, where Jesus told them. All right, now I want you to look on right here and I'll read on right here. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 verse 3 and as he said upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world well he told them right there what would happen and it did happen in AD 70 All right, now look what he says he's going on here because see when Jesus left he said I don't know when I'm going to come back No, nope, the angels don't know I don't know only the father knows when I'm going. he's going to send me back so when Jesus left he didn't know and the disciples couldn't tell us because they didn't know. So, therefore, look what it says now right here. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot. The Bible says to beware of false teachers, false, false prophets, 
False preachers, oh, he said, beware of them. Yeah. You'll know them by the fruit they bear. Yeah. And you shall hear of uh, wars, rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise again nations, kingdom again kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these that are beginning the sorrows. You know, we in uh, the, ours, uh, Russia and Ukraine, ours is Israel, and all of them around over there and camped about doing all they doing all over in other, these other countries now starting to come again Israel. Yeah. And the Bible speaks about it in the last days that all the nations will turn again in Israel. Even here in America, it's starting to kind of veer away yeah. from back in Israel. Do you know what the Bible said? He said, I'll bless those that bless Israel and I'll curse those that curse Israel. Israel, we praying for you. Yeah. Uh, Christians over here in America, we praying for you. We, we, back, we praying for you. And, and remember that. We praying for you over here. All right, now look what it says right here now. And you know what? If you'll look and, and Google and, and pull up the disasters around the world, there are earthquakes, there's volcanoes erupting, uh, there's famine all over the world. I mean, there's disasters all over the world that's happening, going on all over the world. These scriptures are being fulfilled right down to a T. I ain't never in my life seen the scriptures being played out before our very eyes. I tell you what, we need to read the word and we need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for knowledge. We need to pray for discernment. We need to pray for understanding so that we can read the word and understand what's going on. Israel, I know, uh, there's Christians over there in Israel. They are. There's Christian people in Israel over there. I've seen them and heard them talk over there where they video, you know, they uh, talk to them and all. Pray, keep praying for Israel. Pray because gee, these scriptures are going to be fulfilled. And they, they're fulfilling right down to a T. And if you're a Christian over there and you know the word, you're seeing it with your, with your very eyes over there. You're seeing it happening. You're over there and you're seeing it happening. All right, now listen right here what it says. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. What's happening right now? What's happening right now? They turn it again, Israel. These nations, these people in the world that hates Israel. They hate them. They don't like them. They despise them. They want Israel to be wiped off the map. Right. But I'm going to tell you what, it ain't going to be wiped off the map anymore, not according to the Scriptures. Right. Not according to the Scriptures. It's not going to be wiped off anymore. Now, they'll be persecuted, and there'll be things happening, and all these wars and all this stuff, and they'll be come against. They're going to be a remnant left of them. They ain't, ain't going to be done away with. They will not be done away with. Right. All right, now listen to what it says right here now. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall be hated, one of a, uh, hate one another. That's happening right now. Uh -huh. That's happening right now. Uh, Israel's got along with a lot of the uh, nations over there in different places, in different uh, religious groups, but now they turn it and they're hating Israel. Starting to hate the people, see? It's all about the scriptures being fulfilled. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Boy, that's happening. People are being deceived. I've never seen such a deception in my life. People being deceived. We need to get into the scriptures. Listen, when the preacher's preaching, you need to get into the scriptures and see what he's saying, if it's right or not. And pray for discernment to know the truth because Jesus said the truth shall set you free. The truth will make you free. Yeah. But if you're not, if you don't know the word, you're not reading alone. See, you ain't gonna know whether you're being deceived or not. So we need to know what the word of God says. We need to know for ourselves what it says. All right, now listen to what it says. And because iniquity shall abound, the, many, the love of many shall wax cold. That he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel, this, the word right here, this. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. I'm going to tell you what. The Antichrist, he's going to step up and he's going to step out when the time comes. The church will be gone. He'll step up and step out and he's going to deceive many. Uh -huh. They're going to build that temple over there and they're going to start doing the sacrifice and he's going to step in and stop all that. There'll be a seven-year peace treaty made and he's going to break that peace treaty right in the middle of it. And I'm going to tell you what, folks. We need to read the word. We need to get serious. We need to we need to make our mind up where are we gonna go. We're gonna stay here or we're gonna fool around and get left behind. I'm gonna tell you what, you need to get into Revelations and read it. See what it says and what's gonna happen during the tribulation. 
And if that don't shake you up, then I don't know. But it, uh, I read it, and it, boy, I tell you what, it makes me want to think about, hey, wait a minute now. Uh, I, I need to be right with the Lord. So they're going to say, well, Jesus is out here. He's over there in the desert. He's over here in this part of the world. He's over here in this part of the world. And people are going to be deceived and flock to him. And you say, well, how can you say that? Go back and Google it. I've seen people on there that said they were Christ and millions of thousands and thousands of people following them. Selling everything they got and giving it to them and stuff like that. See, that is a deceiving spirit. That person saying they're Christ deceiving people. Jesus said it. To, they say, I'm in the desert. If I'm here, if I'm there, don't go to them. Because we're going to know when Jesus comes. Uh, there are going to be some people in the rapture catching up with the church, whatever you want to call it. That's getting to be a thing now. People saying there ain't going to be no such thing. But uh, you need to get into the scriptures and read it for yourself. Because I've done read the book, uh, praise God, and I know what the Bible says. Now, I want you to look at this right here. This is a clear illustration of what the Bible says. I'm going to jump over to Matthew 24, verse 37. But as it was... But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Still, that, that day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also it, the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall there be two in the field; one uh, shall be taken, one the other one left. The woman. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, the other left. Watch you therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. But know this. This is Jesus talking. Yeah, come on. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. See, we need to be, uh, be we need to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving our own self. You know what's happening? People are deceiving their own selves and thinking, well, I, I don't know, I'll be able to get saved the day before Christ comes. Well, the thing about it is, people's dying on every few seconds. Right. You might not make it to tomorrow. Exactly. And I'm going to tell you what, all the technology we got, they ain't a man nowhere. I don't care or where the man is at. There's no man on this earth that is smarter than God is. Right. And they don't have no technology that's going to be able to predict when Jesus is going to come back. Because if Jesus didn't know and the disciples didn't know, there's no man on this earth that can predict it. There's people that says, well, Jesus is going to come back on uh, June the 13th or June the 7th or whatever, 18th or whatever, or 2024. Uh, what do, what would I do with that? I'm just going to make my plans right on because I don't know when Jesus is going to come back and they don't know either. Exactly. That's exactly. See, because if Jesus didn't know, how in the world is man on this earth going to be able to predict when he's going to come back? See, that's where that deceiving spirit comes in at you. Don't, and Jesus said, let no man deceive you. Well, see, you'll sell everything you got or do this or do that. Or people say, well, I tell you what, I got a few months. I'm just going to live it up and then I'll get saved. On, if he's going to come back on June 18th, I'll get saved on June the 17th. What if you die on June the 16th? There you go. And you're undone without Jesus Christ. What are you going to do then? The Bible said to be out some bodies to be present with the Lord if you're saved. Uh -huh. I shared a thing on Facebook uh, here a while back. If the dead, if the living knew what the dead know, everybody would be followers of Christ. Well, you know what? We do have an, an account of it. Yeah. We do have an account of it. Now, now, let me just go over and read it. Now, Israel, I want to say to you, you keep fighting and keep holding on. We're praying for you over there. And if you listen to this and you lost and undone without Jesus, you need to get saved. I want to read you something right here. I want to read this to you in Luke. I want to read you something. I want to show you that we have we have a clear illustration of what the dead will experience when they die. Now, this is starting to be taught now that this is a parable. It ain't no parable. Luke 16, 19. We took, we're just going to shift gears right here for just a minute. Listen to what it says. There was. It didn't say there's, this is a parable. It says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fired something every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs from which fell from the rich man's table. And more of the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, I got a lot of uh, reaction from that that I shared that post about if the living knew what the dead knew, they'd be uh, people to follow Christ. All right. Now, you heard what I talked about the scriptures being fulfilled about Israel and Jerusalem and the signs and all these things. We're seeing them playing out before our very eyes. I want to give you something here now. 
If you die undone without Jesus, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to give you uh, something. It's, this right here is not a parable. Right straight out of the, the rich man's mouth what he said. And it came, now, this is Jesus speaking. And it came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. Both of them died and they were buried. Uh -huh. What it says now, this is out of the right straight out right here from hell, what you're fixing to hear. In the hell, he lifted up his eyes, being tormented, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and the rich man cried. Yeah. See? Right straight out. This is this is eyewitness right here. Right straight out of hell what uh, the rich man was saying to Abraham. That Jesus had it rec recorded down. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy and on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. There is your eyewitness Listen, living, if you listen to this, you got to be alive. You're living. You're breathing. Yeah. You're wondering, well, what could, the, what could somebody in hell tell me to change my mind to let me know that I need to get saved? I just read it to you. In this flame, I am tormented. The rich man said, I'm tormented in these flames. Yeah. All right? But he said right here, look what Abraham said. But, but he said, son, remember that that thou in thy lifetime receive of thy good things. See, when the rich man was here on earth, he said, I don't need all that. I don't need I don't need to hear about Jesus. I don't need to be saved. I got all I need. I can buy anything I want. I can I can got servants. I can tell them to go over here and do this and do that, and they do it. I, I got all I need. But little did he know, the greatest gift, the greatest thing that he could ever have had in his life was salvation, was Jesus Christ. You know what? We neglecting so great a salvation. Telling you what, it's a shame to realize, to, to think about here in America how blessed this nation's been and look where it's heading now. People dying and going to hell every day and this, and this nation right here has spread the gospel all over the world for years and years and years and years. And the gospel is available to anybody that wants to hear it. It's like these, this broadcast right here. It goes all any household, anywhere in the world. If they just so want to hear the word, they can turn on what the world needs of Jesus and listen to it. See, we're not trying to make a name for ourselves. It ain't about us making a name for ourselves. We can't save nobody, heal nobody, deliver nobody, do nothing. But we're telling you about the one that can. His name is Jesus Christ. Look what it says right here now. I'm going to skip on down right here to verse 27. Because uh, he, he was uh, saw that the gulf, he was in hell, and he saw Abraham, all that. Jesus went down to the heart of the earth, and he preached to them, was in prison, which is paradise that was in, uh, in beneath the earth, done away with, now they all in heaven. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house. Talking about send Lazarus, let him go back and send him to my father's house. I can't get out of hell, but you can send him back to my father's house. Why did he want him to go to his father's house and tell him? He knows what he knowed. He knowed what it was, uh, He knowed what hell was like. Uh -huh. See, but his brother was still alive. He said, "If I can just get somebody to go to my father's house and tell my brothers that are alive, they won't come to this horrible place." Uh -huh. Look what it says right here. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Listen to me, lost person. If you don't get saved. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. There is a place of torment is hell. When your breath leaves your body and you ain't born again, you don't. Have, and Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior. You're going to go down there and you're going to find out what the rich man experienced. That that uh, that I posted on there and shared. I shared it. If the dead, if the living knew what the dead knew, they would be followers of Christ. Yeah. Folks, I just read you straight out of the pits of hell which uh, is ahead of a person that does not receive Jesus and they die undone without Jesus you have a, an account straight out of the pits of hell of where you're going to and you know what we don't have no excuse you have an encounter right there think about that boy I tell you it just sounds my heart think about somebody that's living and breathing on the face of this earth Right now, living and breathing, but they're undone without Jesus, and they are 
they, they're just one heartbeat away from busting hell wide open. But they're also one heartbeat away from receiving Christ as their Lord and Savior if they'll come to the knowledge of the truth and receive what the Word says when the Spirit's knocking. When He's knocking on your door, it's time for you to receive Him. I shared another thing on there about uh, 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 kids. It said, uh, this tight little girl on there had her picture on there and it's posted on there, Mom, talking about Mom, Dad, y'all taught me all about things of the world and the things of life and everything, but what about my soul? What about Jesus? What about teaching me about Him? Listen to me, parents. It ain't only just about uh, you it's about your kids, it's about your brothers, your sisters, your mama, your daddy, your grandparents, your friends, yep. all that. It ain't just about us, it's going to uh, but about one person. It's about how many people around you that you could affect if you'd give your life to Christ and share the gospel with them let them know about Jesus. Because even them little babies when they brought into the world, they have a soul. If that baby dies up to a certain age, there's I think it's different ages where they come to the age of accountability. I'm not getting into that. But if that baby dies before it gets to a certain of age of accountability and it dies, it's going to go into heaven innocent. But after it gets up to a certain age and it knows right from wrong, then then they got to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior just like we all do, whether you're, whatever your age is. You can be 80 years old and and need you got to have Jesus. It don't matter if you're 100 years old. If you've got to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've got to be born again in order to go to heaven. Right. Folks, listen to me. This is, a, this is a, boy, I'm telling you what, this is serious. Look what uh, Abraham said right here when he told him, he said, send Lazarus back to my father's house and tell him. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. You know what? Moses and the prophets are done going on. Yep. Now it's preachers. I hear, I hear Brother Rick, me and Brother Rick, and Harold, we on what the world needs is Jesus. We, we, we don't have Moses to stand up here and talk to you, but we can read you what, they tell, what the Word says about what they said. We're reading you right here what Abraham told a rich man. We're giving you that account of it all right there. If you don't hear us and you don't receive Christ, then you ain't rejecting us. You're not rejecting us. You're rejecting Jesus in the Word. It's not about you're not rejecting us. You're rejecting Jesus and the Word of God and the Father and the drawing of the Spirit. That's what you're doing. Look what it says right here. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. We're preaching you the gospel today. Let those that will hear, hear what the Spirit's saying. We're trying to tell you that, that, that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. And the only way you're going to be able to do it is through accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, it's heartbreaking to think about somebody dying undone without Jesus. But it's happening It's happening on a daily basis, people dying undone without Jesus. Look what it says right here. He said, Nay, Father Ham, but if one went back unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Folks, listen to me. I, I, I beseech you to. I beseech you. I plead with you today to think about where you're going to spend eternity at. Yes, yes. I'm going to tell you what. Once your breath leaves your body, it's over with. Yes. It's over with. I'm, I, there is no second change. There ain't going to be no other time that you're going to be able to ask. The rich man, the rich man, he, you, you didn't read in there where he's crying out, let me get out of here and let me be born again. He knew that his destination was done there. He was there. Then he was worried about his brethren. Listen, when you die and you get down there, you're going to cry out, send somebody to my father's house and tell my loved ones don't come down here. You're going to cry out, God have mercy, send somebody to my father's house and let them hear. Let them hear about the word. Well, we're bringing the word to you today and letting you know. We're letting you know that Jesus Christ loves you and he died for you. And on that third day, he rose, and he's saying to you today, if you'll hear me, if you'll hear the word, and when I'm knocking on your heart's door, if you'll open your heart up and allow me to do it, and you'll call me to save you and repent of your sins and accept me as your Lord and Savior, he said, I will save you. But if you don't do it, he said, if you neglect me here, he said, I'll neglect you when you come up before me because 
He can't, he, he can't, after your breath leaves your body and you don't accept him, see, you've blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. You've denied him. He said, if you deny me before man, I'll deny you before the Father. Folks, you've heard the word today. I've did all I can do right there. That's all I can do, but I'm going to pray that God's going to, let's pray right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that this word today, wherever it goes, every household it goes into, Lord, every ear, Lord, that it goes into. It's not about me. It's about you, Jesus. I pray, God, you convict their hearts, Lord, and open their eyes and let them see the truth, Lord, that they need you, Lord. They need you more than they need anything, Lord. I obeyed you, Lord, and read them an encounter from hell. What it'll be like when they get there. And they don't need to go to that place, Lord. And you not it's not your will for them to go to hell. You paid that price that Calvary has paid for. That all they got to do is reach out and receive you as their Lord and Savior and get saved. I pray today, Lord, you convict hearts, Lord, all over the world that people will get saved. And see the truth and realize that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by you, Lord. Let your truth be revealed to them today, Lord. And open their eyes, Lord, and let them see the truth. And we want to thank you for listening to today. What the world needs is Jesus, and amen and amen. I pray you get saved before it's too late. Until next time, God bless you. Little girl was lying there. The people all were weeping. They just laughed at Jesus when he said she's only sleeping. But as he took her by the hand and she began to live again, some began to praise the Lord and some began to say, Jesus touched this heart of mine and gave me life again. I am just a house of clay, but ever since that blessed day, there's a light that shines in me so all the world can see that He's in the to be and now I have hope there's no more doubt praise his name praise his name he's in the house death had to flee now there is light where darkness used to be just want to say we appreciate you for watching today. I hope something was said, uh, maybe help you out in your daily walk with Jesus, amen, or help you out with your daily walk in the world, uh, uh, amen, that might change your mind from being lost to being saved, amen. Glory be to God. If you got a prayer request today, you can send a private message to facebook.com forward slash what the world needs is Jesus. 
You can call or text Brother Ricky Phillips, 256-630-1262, Brother Kenneth Crane at 256-557-2858, or Brother Harold O'Neill at 256-475-5854. You can also email us at what the world needs is Jesus TV at gmail.com. And like I say, we appreciate you today and we thank you for tuning in. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. Amen. <music>